Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you guys a extra special type of video. This is a new entire series that I've been talking about, been bragging about. Basically, I'm going to be casting myself playing a matchmaking game. And because due to the fact that it'll probably be difficult for me, especially starting off, to cast while I'm playing, I decided to go ahead and play the match. Uh, and then cast afterwards so I know exactly what's going to happen, but I'm not going to tell you guys that. You guys have to stick around and watch the video. Um, just know that I, I am in matchmaking. I'm not claiming to be a professional or anything. I'm just saying that if you guys really want to, or if I, if I really want to get you guys respect, I got to show you guys how I play. So I created this nice little beautiful overlay to cover up that timer so you won't be able to see how long the game goes. I get to play this game as Ogre Magi, so we get to see how fun that is. I think I talked about Ogre Magi a few times. But I'll try to my best of my ability to cast this as if I've never seen what happened. But I will have a little bit of insight on where big things will be happening at. But anyway, um, we came into this game. This was a random draft. Uh, I was in a five stack with some of my, or four stack with some of my friends. So there was five of us total, and everybody knew everybody. Well, I kind of I knew um, Andrew Beck or Andrew Break. Big shout out to Am Break or Am Brook. Am Brook. Okay, that's kind of weird to read. Big shout out to him for having four people to come with me into a game. That was fun. Uh, I'm going to be casting a total of two of these, so two of these will be going up at once. <clears throat> That's not going to be a standard, like I said before. I'm basically going to play three games and then cast two of those three. So this is going to kind of fit into that format. But I only played two matchmaking games, so whatever happened, happened. And I also gave the guys a heads up in this um, that are in this game on my team. I gave them the heads up that I will be casting this regardless of what happens. And... <laughs> And they, they they were kind of they were kind of worried at first, but as soon as the game started, or as soon as we got into the match, we can say, okay, whatever, uh, go ahead and do what you got to do. So they kindly kindly let me cast all this, and I will also be tagging everybody in this game as I always do, so that way they can find themselves and laugh at how well they did, or laugh at how much of a raffle stomp, laugh at how much of a domination we had. It can laugh at anything, <clears throat> but once again, I'm going to. I'm not going to be spoiling anything for you guys, so no hopes in that, but I will have more, um, because I did play this game, I will be focusing maybe a little bit more on myself than no anybody else. Uh, I play Ogre Magi, in just case you guys didn't know. So I was playing the support role, and that's all I will really say. We'll see how this game winds out, <clears throat> and in the spirit of a normal type of game, I'm going to let it go all the way through instead of fast forwarding, because I know I could fast forward. But <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you guys want to hear me talk more, so let's go ahead and talk more about stuff. Uh, what's on my desk? Well, actually, new things are on my desk now. Um, in just case you guys didn't know, the last few videos are in the same day, or I recorded those the same day that I'm recording this. So it's the only thing has really changed, or so nothing much should have changed, but I actually went to the store and bought myself a whole bunch of cheese, because cheese is healthy, and a lot of candy, because candy is, candy is unhealthy, so might as well. Anyway, we got a, uh, oh, let me go ahead and choose the players, uh, switch the free camera real quick. Free camera. All right, let me go ahead and introduce the players on the radiant side, since I don't know any of these guys. Uh, we have NJ, NJ E K T, inject, inject. We have inject on that crystal maiden, who has a pretty cool career. Uh, we have Lieutenant Frank, Lieutenant Frank Durbin on that Rubik. We have the black guy from Ghostbusters, so he's obviously the black guy from Ghostbusters, guys. On that Kunkka, and we have Kool-Aid Man on that faceless void, so he's going to jump out of the wall a few times. Who knows what will happen? We shall see. We have Cyclone Thane. Cyclone Thane on that Lich. We're on his team. Now, moving on to the dire side, uh, we have Andrew Brick. Um, big shout outs to him for having the people to, um, to go with me, so I didn't have to go on alone. It was not a lonely endeavor because of this guy, but he plays that Centaur War Runner. Uh, we have... We have here Joey was on that Queen of Pain. Uh, we have Cannon Fodder. Cannon Fodder up on that Earthshaker. And we have a Go Get em Boy or Go Get em Big Guy. I almost said that wrong. On that Phantom Lantern. And last but not least, of course, we have me. Finally, you guys get to see me play. You have me on Cool Blue on that Ogre Magi. And we shall see how things go. Uh, anyway. Now let me go ahead and bring up this lights into the night since nothing really interesting has happened so far. We got two people coming from the radio side to award. I think yeah they warded, they warded this high ground spot which is actually a really good spot because uh, when you, oh, well let me draw. When you ward that high ground spot, that's a really good spot for the radiant mainly because any or the dyer's main path of exit, especially for checking the rune, is to go down through here so they can see where the di or where the dyer, where the dyer's mid goes for the rune and they can also see where the impending ganks might be coming from. 
Uh, anyway, so uh, we got a room picked up by Lich. We have a Lich mid versus a Queen of Pain. That's kind of an interesting matchup. Usually you see Lich play that's a, uh, that support role, but no, this Lich decided to play mid. So Lich versus Queen of Pain. Uh, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, we have a Faces Void and Crystal Maiden down by playing against that Centaur War Runner and uh, Earthshaker. So we'll see how that lane matchup goes. And meanwhile, on top, of course, where I am, we have <laughs> we have Rubik and Kunkka versus a Phantolancer Ogre Magi lane. Uh, Ogre Magi is going to be playing a support role. Phantolancer is obviously going to be playing a carry role. So, so Phantolancer really wants to get his farm. Uh, also, just to give you a little bit of insight on what I was trying attempting to do. I was attempting to uh, whether whether it was successful or not, we'll see. But what I was pretty much trying to do was just stay out of lane as long as possible, so that way Phantolancer could get some XP. As far as the other bottom lane, you can see that bottom, uh, the bottom lane is basically doing the same exact thing. Crystal Maid is doing pulling, she's doing stacking. That's a single pull, so it will push the lane. But, uh, I mean, she's, oh uh, yeah, it, it will push the lane, so her carry probably won't like that too much. But, I mean, it doesn't really matter all that much, especially this early on. Not really much that the Dyer can do to punish that. Uh, meanwhile, we got the rest. Of, we got some of the Dyer coming around the side. We got Centaur and this Earthshaker, <coughs> Earthshaker coming around the back. To... Still a few creeps, get a few last hit, get some XP, so they won't be denied everything. And there's a pretty big creep wave left after that pull. So as you see, single pulls, as always, or as I think I explained before, single pulls are not all that effective because the creep wave is still alive is after the, after they kill the neutral camp. So then that creep wave comes through, plus the other creep wave that is on your side. So you you essentially end up with more creeps in your lane than you started with, <laughs> even though you had or even though you pulled. So double creep wave or double creep pull. Like, if this stack right here were pulled, uh, it will pretty much kill all the creeps coming into the lane. Uh, not really much interesting going on so far, just a lot of just a lot of farming going on. Uh, Kunkka does have, or, oh my gosh, Kunkka, Faces Void, and Lich are at the top of that list, and the rest of Dyer are following right behind them. Not really a good spot to be in. Uh, there's a stun thrown out on top of Kunkka from Ogre Magi. Oh, nope, they walk away. Actually, I need to start calling these guys by name. Uh, since I'm going to be start preparing to um, cast a pro match or two, we'll see Double when that happens. Damage. So I'm going to start calling people by name. Cool Blue, who is obviously me. Uh, go get him, big guy. So big guy, big guy's a fan of They're doing a little bit of harassing back and forth. The black guy from Ghostbusters. Okay, this is going to be kind of weird. The black guy from Ghostbusters is taking a few, a little bit of harassment, but he is pretty much fine. He still has his region up. Uh, Rubik throws out the. Oh my gosh, I missed the first blood. First blood happened mid. First uh, blood. Ooh, first blood what happened down bot. Wait, where'd he go? <laughs> okay, that was confusing. I think first blood happened down bot. Yes, Queen of Pain got a kill on the Crystal Maiden, but then she went down to the Faces Void. Sorry, so sorry I missed that, guys. I probably should have caught that, especially seeing as how I was kind of in the game. But, obviously, wasn't on that lane, so I did not really catch that. So I missed the first blood, also, but I did, and also missed the kill on Queen of Pain. So a, lo a, um, a lot of action happening down this bot lane, obviously. Between the faces void, uh, between the faces void, Crystal Maiden, that's a pretty aggressive setup. Crystal Maiden can throw that frostbite, and faces void might be able to hit a um, back, might be able to hit a time lock or two. So that way, whoever he stuns will not be able to run away. But then again, there's some pretty good defense on the side of Dire in this lane because between Earthshaker and Centaur, they can pretty much stun all they want and stun everybody on up. Uh, Crystal Maiden is doing a little bit of D-Watch, he throws out the Sentry Ward, Centaur is coming around the corner, he's doing some damage to Crystal Maiden, trying to punish her for that. Earthshaker will be following up with the stun, there we go, stun thrown down, but Centaur is on the Mission wrong top. side of the wall. They're going to continue pursuit of this Crystal Maiden. Will they be able to get her? I don't really know. She runs through a tree, runs through a tree, tangos, or gets eats a, tang or eats a tree and keeps running. Face of Void does his time walk so he can slow it down everybody, but it will not be enough. Crystal Maiden will still go down. Will Face of Void be able to make it out? I do not know. He's getting blocked by his own creeps, and now he's not able to make it out. Meanwhile, Lich goes down mid. Queen of Pain is able to get the kill on Lich. Pretty good for her. I was, following, I was really following close to that bottom engagement because if that face of Void would have went down, that would have been bad for his team. Uh, meanwhile, we got Ogre Magi coming in, or we got Cool Blue coming in. That's me, coming in with a haste room, trying to see what he can do. Oh, on this Faces Void. Faces Void is a little bit too far back, so that stun is going to be going to waste, but Faces Void, and Faces Void makes sure he stays alive by just time walking in the opposite direction. So a little bit of, a, a lot of regression going, well not a lot of regression, a little bit of action happening early on. Now I have a little bit of time, I'll go ahead and take a look at the items. As far as the items go, not really all that much interest on anybody. Uh, Ogre Magi doesn't have anything, that's me of course. Don't, doesn't have much, in, I just bought a Basilius. Is kind of weird. But my bottom Basilius have a courier bring it to me. No. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, sorry, what else is on the map? Uh, Rubik is building himself that magic wand. Or, yeah, magic wand, so he'll be able to 
still spells a little bit more effectively and also has that burst HP regen and mana regen whenever that comes up. Which looks like he's building Tranquil Boots by the looks of it. So that way he can move a little bit faster and comes to team fights. Face of Void is about to have that up. Uh, is about to have his uh, treads up. I'm not sure how close he is to that. I can check real quick. He currently has 250 gold, so he is a little ha a little over halfway to that. He'll have that up pretty mo or momentarily. As soon as he get a few more last hit or a few last hits, I'm not really sure how many last hits he's actually gonna be able to get because between his Earth Shaker, he's between his Earth Shaker and this Centaur, they can pretty much do a lot of damage. And there's oh my gosh, those those double edges, those double edges are painful. And Centaur War Runner did in fact build himself a Tranquil Boots, and that's that's something that's kind of standard on him because Tranquil Boots will uh. Tranquil Boots will give him that heal after he uses his big nuke, which is Double Edge. Double Edge costs nothing but HP, so it deals 250 HP or 300 in, right, at the current point, or at the max. It deals 400 HP, 400 damage to both him, self, and the enemy. And the Tranquil Boots will heal him for I think 100 and something. Anyway, uh, here's Ruby coming around the corner. As Queen of Pain's coming up for a top, this stun throw on top of Ruby's head. Queen of Pain throws out the screams. She's able to scream. She's also able to get the kill on the Ruby. And there's more damage going on. If uh, one more stun or one more slow, and Kunka will be going down. I do not think. Yes, uh, Spirit Lance is thrown out, but the stun is. Not, it was stun just came up. Throws the stun and they back off. They could have potentially got that kill, but I'm not too sure. I think Kunka probably would have thrown a torrent or two, and he might have been able to survive, and he would have um, lost his lives. So these guys back up accordingly. Meanwhile, Earthshaker's hanging out in the corner. I'm not really sure what he's doing over here. And Face of Void wants to join the party. He doesn't see him just yet, but he does have Chronosphere up. And Earthshaker is going to stand there and take some damage. Missing talk. Okay, there we go. Face of Void finally found him. Will he be able to do anything? I do not know. If Earthshaker... Oh, guys. Earthshaker does not... Is not able to do anything. And... I say stop it. I'm not really sure why. A centaur is going in for this crystal maiden. Will he be able to get the kill? I do not know. One more last hit. Oh my gosh, he almost got it, but she broke vision just in time. So faces will end crystal maiden able to make it on the engagement. Very strange engagement indeed. I'm not too sure what Earthshake was doing in that corner to begin with. And this faces will throw out the lap. But nonetheless, people go down. Uh, meanwhile, we have Kunka doing more tiebringer damage, and we have Rubik. Just chilling out, playing Sentry for his team. Uh, we have Queen of Pain is able to get the kill on the, on the Crystal Maiden. She just ran over for the pickoff. I'm not too surprised at that. She can just blink everywhere, and Crystal Maiden was already low to begin with. Uh, she would have been able to get that um, Faces Void up even better. Uh, meanwhile, we got a little bit of engagement happening on top. We got a Centaur running around, running around the side. Uh, Lich is chasing him. Lich is trying to throw a slow. I'm not really sure what Centaur is doing over here. He misses the stun. He gets called back. He gets telekinesis. Everything is getting thrown at him. Ty uh, there's a torrent, and he's trying to do what he can. Double, double edge does not do enough damage to take down Kunka, and he goes down. I'm not. <laughs> that was a little bit aggressive on his part, and he did pay for it with his life. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Moving on to Gold Graph. That's not what I want to see. The gold graph. The gold graph is in favor of the dire. Just barely. That's mainly be probably because of the crystal or probably because of the Queen of Pain in the mid just continuously farming. As you can see, she's currently worth the most gold in um, in this game. And actually, let me go top, but we got a little bit of aggression going on inside. Raiden are trying to go for what looks like a Phantoms, but Phantoms just hides inside the corner. He is scared. He is afraid. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side we have Ogre Major run away. He has no mana. So he can't really do anything. Actually, Ogre Magi was me, so I'm running away because I have no mana. I built up a Silius. Uh, the think the thought process was that I was going to be staying in lane a lot longer with Phan um, Phan Phantom to give him mana back, but I mean, to be honest, I I'm building Radiant's another item such as maybe attack. the headdress instead of a Ring of Basilius would have been a better idea. But seeing as how I was, how I was t attempting to roam so much, it's kind of, I don't know, kind of hard to tell if it will have worked out or not. I uh, just know, long story short, Ring of Basilius uh, on me before I got boots, probably not the best of ideas. But anyway, all that aside, Centaur Warner was trying to go in. He gets a stun on the Kunka. Queen of Pain is around. She throws a scream out. Uh, there's the. Oh my gosh, there's, there's an ulti from Lynch hitting everybody. Everybody's taking a lot of damage, and Ogre Maja might be able to make it out. He's getting attacked by a Lich. If he turns around and throws a stun, he might be able to get a kill. No, he did not turn around. He decided opted to run. I don't know why I didn't turn around and go for that. And then Kunka gets a kill on somebody. My flesh. Kunka gets a kill on. Really? Missing bottom. Oh, okay. Kunka gets a kill on Queen of Pain. All right. Not too sure what Queen of Pain was doing way up there. I think she was trying to go for the pickoff, but she probably came around the corner pretty low. And Kunka just walked away. So that was a very weird engagement. Um, yeah, sorry I missed that one. Missing bottom. I think in the game I was wondering what, how he died too. But 
Anyways, uh, down in the bottom lane, we got the bottom tower being pushed. Uh, Face of Void does have his Chrono Sphere so he can potentially use it to be defensive, but he doesn't really need to. And there is a TP canceled by the Queen of Pain. She was going to TP bot, but she decided not to. She's going to go ahead and go mid, because mid can be pushed. Uh, Fanalyst is continuing to farm on top, but he's not having a fun time up here. His lot, if, if you take a look at his lights hits, they are not really all that high. Uh, his lights hits are only 12 to two, 12 and 2. He needs much more farm than that before he can carry anything. He at least needs his defusal blade, so that way he can become more effective. Uh, meanwhile, Ogre Miser is in the jungle. The support's just farming up some gold. Uh, I currently, I currently have five lights hits, so I'm a little bit behind the Phantom Lancer, but Phantom Lancer should be should have a lot of more farm, though he's able, it, actually able to get. But then again, at the same time, by the lane that he was attack. facing, all the aggression that he was facing up top, there's not really much he could do. Dyer's top tower has Let's see, Dyer, uh, Dyer, we, uh, Dyer loses the top tower, so top tower goes down on my side. Uh, meanwhile, on the other hand, uh, we look at the bottom, there's nice. still more engagements going back and forth. Centaur looked like he was about to throw it's an auto attack or maybe a double edge, but he just canceled it. Queen of Pain picks herself up a bottle, and she blinks away. As far as items go, Faces Void is building himself a quarter staff, so he's going for a butterfly? That's, that's kind of weird. A butterfly that fast. But if he has a farm for it, why not? Uh, typically, a battle fairy is preferred before, or a battle fairy or a mask of madness is preferred before you get a butterfly because those things give you region. Those things, those Radiant's things give you cheaper, or fallen. cheaper stats that you can definitely use versus going straight for a butterfly. It just gives you all that damage and evasion. And I think Faces Void might want a little bit more sustain. And I think uh, something weird. Oh man, I missed that. Uh, so sorry, I missed that. It was, it was two deaths going down bot. I actually, yes, I just will. I am going to rewind just a little bit because I did miss that and I feel bad. Uh, basically, hold on, he just created at the end of that. There we go. Alright, so we will stare down here to see what the engagement is going on. Uh, we got Centaur, War Runner, and Earthshake about to go in. They obviously both die, spoiler alert. But, something interesting did happen. I really wanted to catch this, and I did miss it like a Missing boss. Man. So I'm going to rewind, because I can, because I'm going to replay. I will not do this often, Dyer's but I will definitely do it for this fortified. case. To see what Dyer's happens. Top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. The big question is, how Dyer's did they get top there? Tower has fallen. I know. Uh, so, so we got a little bit back and forth going between the faces void and everybody else. Uh, not really too much to brag. Uh, not really too much to talk about Missing so bottom. far. Um, Chris Man is doing a little pulling. They're going for the tower. This tower might be going down, or this tower will be going down pretty soon, as we saw. I think it did go, or it did go down before the deaths happen, but this needs to hurry up a little bit. I'm s oh, okay, here we go. Um, the game's about to happen. Since our Warrunner is coming in, he's uh, they're going to go ahead and go for the last hits on the tower. There's a TP coming in, TP coming in from Rubik. Or sorry, TP coming in from Kuka. Kuka throws out the, throws out the uh, torrent, and that's the ulti from Face Boy. These guys are stuck in the air, and they're still taking a lot of damage. So uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> that's what they were talking about earlier. It says, oh, come on, we're in the sky. How can you possibly hit us? But anyway, so that was definitely somewhat worth it. To go back and check that out. Uh, me and my Ogre Magi, which is me, is going to place a few wards. Place, I place a ward over here, which is actually a little late. I probably should have placed this ward a lot earlier, so these guys down in bottom lane could be much safer. Or possibly place their ward down here, because as you saw, Crystal Man was consistently pulling, so they were consistently in a bad spot. Just to know, at least help him out. And I don't have boots yet, so I need to go ahead and buy those. I have 530 gold, so... Not really sure why I don't buy boots yet, but things go on around the map. We got rotations coming in from the dire, I'm oh, sorry, from the radiant side. Kunkka's going in mid just to farm out the lane or potentially protect the lane. Uh, Crystal Maiden and Rubik are roaming around in circles. I'm not really sure, too sure where they're heading. Meanwhile, Fanalite is farming top. He's finally getting farmed. He has himself the first piece of his defusal blade. He has that blade of Alkyrie. Or blade of Alkyrie. Alkyrie. That blade of Alcrity, which makes him attack a little bit, or which makes him attack faster, and the stats Radiant's also transfer to his illusions. Under attack. That is right, folks. Bonus stuff does not transfer to illusions, only stats. So, if you have a choice between a Vitality Booster Radiant's or a Reaver, or when you're trying to build attack. a heart and you have a bunch of illusions, a Reaver is a better choice because of, because those stats will go over to your illusions, as opposed to building a Vitality Booster, which will only give you 200 plus 250 HP. That does not go to your illusions at all. I mean, oh, items, items are getting a little bit more interesting. We have, like I saw earlier, the Blade of Alcrio and Phantom Lancer, so he's getting ready to build that. He's getting ready to build that Diffusal Blade. Uh, meanwhile, we have, what else? 
We have nothing too special. There's, there's a Vanguard up on Kunkka. Uh, Crystal Man is building that mechanism for her team. Uh, Lich was playing mid, so he's playing a little bit more aggressively. He doesn't have much of anything just yet. I'm, like, I'm wondering what he's going to be getting next. Meanwhile, Centaur is trying to build that cloak, or trying to build that hood of defiance so he can get ready to build a pipe for his team. And Queen of Pain has a Orb of Venom. I'm not sure I agree with that at all. Uh, she throws out the oh my gosh, Queen of Pain ulti thrown out. It didn't it didn't really hit anybody. There's a Tidebringer throw, or there's a Torrent thrown out, and there's, there's a Blitz ulti hitting everybody. Ogre Magic going down to the ulti from Kunka, and Earthshaker trying to do what he can to keep everybody alive, but no, Crystal Man throws on the ulti, so everybody slowed down, and Centaur's in a little bit of trouble. He's stunned up because of that, because of Earthshaker being thrown down. This ulti from Centaur, a little, a really late ulti from Centaur to help her to get away. It might have been better for you to use that earlier for everybody to start, initiate the fight. But I think I think things went a little bad. Uh, even if he would have, uh, the Lich ulti would have been doing work on everybody. Uh, the Earthshaker Fissure, I did see it. It was not in the ideal position. It was pretty much blocking off a lot of people in that region, region area, Dyer's or that region. So it's keeping attack. people from coming uphill in this direction. Now oh, you guys can't really see my mouse. I hit my mouse on purpose because it makes viewing much more pleasurable. Uh, meanwhile, we have a Faceless Boy. He finds himself a Phantom Lancer. He goes away. He assumes that's illusion. And he keeps going up, but Phantom Lancer just faked him out, just continue to walk in the right in the same attack. direction. Um, meanwhile, Ogre Magi comes down mid, he finally has boots, I can move faster Radiant's guys, yes. Tower is under attack. And does a little farming down mid, uh, we have some guy TPing in mid, we have Centaur TPing in mid, Centaur ulti is off cooldown in about 60, 65 seconds, Radiant's so that'll help his team out. Uh, meanwhile, but it, looks like, it looks like Lich is building himself an Aghanim Scepter, so Aghanim Scepter on Lich, what does that give him? That's a big question. Uh, it changes the damage from 300, or Radiant's it changes the damage from 460 at max level to 550 team. per bounce. Does it do anything for cooldown is the question. No, it does nothing for the cooldown. Just increases the damage that it does. I mean, we, we have a uh, Shadow Strike up on Faces Void. He'll be fine. He's going to run away in circles. What will he be building next is a big question. We got a Screaming Pain going by Rubik. Screaming Pain used by Rubik. It was kill. It was used to kill Earthshaker. We got Ogre Magic going down to a lot of damage. We got a TP coming in a little too late. Another TP coming in. Phantom is here. Phantom instantly gets telekinesis and he also gets uh, torrented. So he can't really do much of anything. Now he's low HP. Rubik did the Rubik stole Screaming Pain once. Or Rubik stole the Screaming Pain. Yes, he did. He stole Screaming Pain. So he's going to be able to do a little bit of damage. Centaur's trying to run away, but he can't. His ulti will be up in five seconds, but not enough time. Triple kill on Kunkka. So Kunkka really get. <laughs> Kunkka really in these good positions, and things are not looking good for the Dyer at this point. Uh, if you take a look at the gold graph, the gold graph is heavily in favor of the Radiant, and that's basically with one. Okay, that's basically kill gold, and officially a little bit of tower gold now. So every all these team fights have been going heavily in favor Dyer's of the Dyer. Oh, sorry, of the Radiant. Attack. That's probably because the Radiant have a much better team fight composition, given the fact that Kunkka has both and uh, Ruby has that zap, which can take everybody's damage down. And Lich with his bouncing ulti, that does a lot of damage. Um, the more the closer people are together. And actually, now that I look at it, uh, Dyer, or the, yeah, the Dyer have a pretty much melee lineup, except for that Queen of Pain, so they kind of do have to clump up if they want to do damage. So as far as uh, what else is going on, Face of Boy does have an Invis rune on him. Kunkka's going to be getting engaged by oh, Shadow Strike on the creep, so she does not like that creep. And Kunkka's trying to do what he can. He throws out the Torrent, Torrent misses, and Kunkka comes around. What is what is Face of Boy going to be doing? I do not know. He's walking towards the middle tower. is gone, so they cannot see him. He is still here. He's hanging out around. What will he be doing is a big question. He's going for the crystal. He's going for the um, Queen of Pain, it looks like. He hits him once and throws out the ulti. There's also the uh, X marks the spot, just in case you try to get away. And she goes down inside the Chrono Square to the Lich. So not good at all. Uh, Taking a look at the last hits before I take this graph away forever. Kunkka has 59 last hits, and Fan uh, Phantom Lancer has only 38. So, so the black guy, sorry, what is it? The black guy from Ghostbusters farming really efficiently. He's also been involved in a lot of kills. He's at 707, so he's been unkillable at the point at this moment. That Vanguard really paying off in his favor. As far as the die side goes, uh, we can take a look at the kill. We can take a look at the kills, deaths, and assists. Uh, the kills death and assist show that the person carrying on the side of Dyer is the Queen of Pain, but she has died five times. Not really ideal for the person to be that similar character for it. Oh my god, Blitz coming in, engagement coming in mid, uh, Centaur going out almost instantly. Lich bounce, Lich ulti bouncing on everybody. Queen of Pain throws out the screen. There is the dust thrown, and there's a beautiful, beautiful Earthshaker ult, but it might not, it was a little too little, uh, a 
too little too late. Ogre Magi gonna be going down. He does go down. Uh, Queen of Pain trying to run away. She will be able to blink soon. No, she goes down to the Crystal Mana Nuke. And here's Earthshaker trying to run away. Will he be able to get away? I do not know. He does have Mana Boots up in one second. He activates the Mana Boots, turn around. Oh my god, Lich gets a kill on him. <laughs> That was a very disgruntled team fight. That was a fight under the tower, which is which essentially should be in favor of the dire Dyer's side, yes. But under attack. the thing that really killed it was the Lich ulti. Between the Lich ulti and the between Lich ulti and Chris, Crystal Maiden and slow in the boat, things were going extremely bad uh, in that team fight. Uh, Crystal Maiden was slowing everybody so nobody could run. Kunka threw out the boat so everybody got stunned up, and then you had Lich throwing his ulti, which is bouncing on everybody, applying that frostbite, applying, or sorry, applying, the, applying that frost blast debuff, applying that damage, and there was really no chance. Uh, uh, Dire were pretty much really clumped up, and that was pretty bad for them. Or sorry, for us, because I was on the Dire side. So that went pretty badly. Hopefully things will be looking up. I'm not really sure. Now things are looking quite dire. Kunka has himself a Shadow Blade, so he'll be using that pretty soon. Uh, meanwhile, Queen of Pain has Radiant used her screen mid, and Centaur attack. picks up the rest of the farm. Ogre Mind is still running around with nothing really. Uh, I assume he's buying wards, but no. Or I assume I was buying wards, but no, there are almost no wards on the map. So I'm not really sure why I'm so poor. Well, hello. It's Kunka saying, "Well, hello." Say thank you for something. And now we got. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I think we got an engagement going on, Roshan. No, this is a Fissure throwing out. Uh, Earthshaker was checking it, see who's in there. I think Fissure gives you vision, so he was doing that. Just see who's over there, what was going on, if anybody's going for Roshan. Uh, meanwhile, okay, take the other graph. We will. We shall take a look at the Two XP graph, because that will tell a story of what's going on. The XP graph. The hero level. I hear. Uh, I hear Torrent torn on top of the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain gets stunned by the Frostbite. Once well, she's hit by the Frostbite, she's not able to move anywhere, so they were able to get that kill. Here's Lich, come out the hill, Lich. I don't know what you're doing up this hill, but you might be going down. He will be getting stunned. He will be getting chain stunned. He will be getting burned on fire, put on fire. And then Centaur ulti, Centaur ulti activated a little too late. Or a, 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 a little, a lot, not really needed, but the Centaur ulti was activated. Just to make sure that they, um, that the Dire get that kill. So Kunka now has a Shadow Blade. He also has a double damage on him, so he'll be hitting like a truck for the next... Five seconds. Come on, come on. Oh, he does. He's not able to get to the creep way fast enough. TP coming in mid from the Queen of Pain. She wants to get back into this fight. I'm still not sure about the Orb of Venom. I don't think that's a really good choice on the Queen of Pain. Uh, I think I, I know. I know Queen of Pain is probably trying to build a Scotty out of that because I think that's the only thing you can build out of an Orb of Venom. Let's see, Scotty. I a Scotty. Yes, it's the only item you can build out of it. But as far as the effectiveness, I mean, it's only a four percent slow. It's yes, it's a cheap item. It only costs two hundred seventy-five gold or something like that. But there are other items that would be much better, like finishing a null talisman or two, maybe, or potentially, potentially just not, or to potentially just save it up for the ultimate or the ultimate or would be much more useful it's much more flexible uh, enough of that though uh, as far as the other items go i think i want to cr critique my items uh, okay i finally got observers dear jesus it took me forever it took me like 50 minutes to get those but the ring of basilius uh not really all that good of idea especially since i was roaming so much i was trying to i was attempting to roam as much as i could so that way fantasy could get all the free farm and also go for ganks but my stun was not or i, I pretty much overestimated my stun it did not really do all that much to help me out. Long story short, Tranquil Boots might have been more useful so I can get in better position for my stun. And also just build a, and then build a Basilius. But uh, Basilius before Boots, not all that good of an idea. It did not work out in my favor. As you guys can see, because I am so under leveled and under farmed. Oh my god, it's so bad. I am level 7. I'm the lowest level in the entire game. So things are going pretty badly for me at the point, or at this moment. And Centaur is doing some damage mid. I'm actually going to go first person view on myself so I can show you guys what kind of movements I'm doing. Person perspective, Ogre Magi. Here's me running away from some creeps. I think I was farming out creeps. That's not too interesting to watch. Uh, okay. Let's go to free camera, see what's going on mid, because we got a little bit of engagement going on mid. Queen of Pain is invisible. She did pick up an invisible rune. Will she be able to do anything with this? Is a big question. She still gets hit by a tiebring. I think she's doing a lot of damage. Kunkus building himself what looks, a bit, what looks like to be a Chrysalis, getting ready for a Daedalus. Uh, he does, in fact, he probably does, in fact, have the farm for it. So things, so things are going even more out of control. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's the current gold. Net worth. Let's look at the net worth. Dyer's you can see tower is under attack. that Fanalish is doing what he Dyer's can to farm up, but I think fortified. But I think the rest of the net worth is telling the tale of the tale. Pretty much all of Dyer in the top six, almost the top five. 
so there's really not much that the Dyer can, the rest of the Dyer can do to survive. Uh, this bottom tower will be going down, giving everybody that much more gold, but Fandalist is the only one holding in, and that's mainly because he's been essentially getting free from on top in the jungle. He's been getting free reign in the jungle. Uh, the Dyer side are trying to play four man Dota versus five man Dota, and they're not really all that, uh, they're not being so successful in it. They should technically be successful in it, between the, with the Queen of Pain, Earthshaker, and the Centaur, but no, there's a Centaur ulti, Centaur runs into the ulti, it's beautiful ulti by Centaur, he's able to slow down everybody, but the bounces from Lich are doing so much damage, there's a Chronosphere, there's a Chronosphere activated by Faces Void, uh, there's a, there's a Haste Rune, or sorry, there's, there's a, what's it called? There's a Bloodlust put on top of the Earthshaker and a little bit of body blocking going on. He should get out of the way already. So everybody's made, able to make it out alive. Uh, the only two went down Centaur and the Queen of Pain. If Fenelon's a warrior here, they might have been able to get a kill or two, yes. Well, actually, no, Fenelon did come in here, but he, I think he was half HP. He does have a Diffuser Blade, so he's, so he's more of a threat now to the side of Dire. But Dire is just whirling out of control at the moment. Or if you take a look at the items, just sheer items. Lich is building himself Dyer's an Agonim Scepter. Uh, there's a mechanism already up on... Crystal Maiden, so she can throw that, or she can just activate that. Her team is taking that much damage. Uh, Rubik looks like he's building himself a sh tornado stick, possibly a sheep stick. I don't really know. I don't really remember. But the really the only big thing on the side of Dire is, is a hood of defiance. Yes, yeah, so he built the pipe and also a diffuser blade. Screaming pain goes out and misses everybody, but it kills a creep wave at least. So that's good. <laughs> that's good for the Dire side. Uh, mana boots are the only thing up on Earthshaker. Earthshaker want, really wants that mana, but he doesn't have much of anything. Is he, if he's, I don't think saving enough for a blink dagger is all that good of an idea because it will not give him all that much uh, stats or regen. But he could potentially be building for, or saving off a blink dagger. Meanwhile, moving on to Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi, who was me, doesn't really have much of anything. Peace. I have sentries and observer ward. I think I got the sentries for the Kunkka or to potentially counter ward. I'm not really sure. I don't know when I realized that Kunkka had a shadow blade. I just know I, I, got, I got sentries and observer ward. So uh, we, we, got, we got both teams hanging out mid fan and meanwhile is in the jungle farming. There's a Bloodlust thrown on top of Earthshaker and a there's a Torrent that hits on two. Both following up with, in the background. Ogre Magic coming around the corner, coming around the corner, throw out the stun. And Rubik steals, Rubik stole what? Rubik, Rubik, steals, Rubik steals a stun, so he'll have two disables on his, in his hand. Uh, meanwhile, I pick off this Observer Ward. That's, that's like the only thing I really remember this game. I picked off that ward, I was happy. I think I was looking for another Observer Ward, but there was nothing to be found. Queen, um, Queen of Pain is in a little bit of trouble. She's trying to go in. She gets pulled back, so oh my god, perfect pullback. But no, not enough to save her life. Uh, Centaur War Runner goes in. Beautiful stun on him. Phalanx is doing a lot of damage. There's a mechanism activated. There's a Lich ulti, and there's a Crystal Maiden slow hitting everybody, and two people go down. Three people go down on a Dire. Phalanx is trying to do what he can, but no, he cannot do enough. He's trying to run away. He is dusted up. He could potentially purge himself, so that way they can't see him, but he's not going to. Uh, he is frozen, he is frostbitten, he's trying to run away, but no, he gets time locked and he goes down. I have seen the future. And meanwhile, the rest of the fan the losers are going to go ahead and push his top tower. I'm sorry, push his top lane to potentially get a tower. The, the Dire really need more gold. The more towers they have, the better. But right now, uh, Faces Void is hitting that point where he's snowballing out of control. That Eagle Song up on him, so he's attacking that much faster. He's bashing that much faster. I still don't agree with this. I still think he needs a little bit more region because as you can see, his HP is pretty low. Uh, he does have 6.6 .6 region. That's not all that bad. But I mean, that's, that's he could have better. He could have that up. Uh, Actually, wait, no, I'm sorry. He does have 2.6 regen. That 6.6 .6 is coming from the Crystal Maiden, who has a mechanism. He could have more regen, so that way, between these fights, he can do um, get a little bit more regen and stay alive. If that causes, the causes them to lose a game, which I'm not saying it did, but if it does, if that does happen to cause them to lose a game, I'm totally not complaining, but I'm just saying. Faces will probably prefer... Or I will probably I will prefer to see Faces Boy build that Battle Fury or potentially build that Mask of Madness so he has some sort of some source of HU origin. And if you guys give me one moment, I have to answer a message. I'm gonna go ahead and follow. So I put myself in first person perspective, see what I was looking at. Uh Alright, sorry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and mute this. Can I mute this? Nope, I cannot mute this. Okay, so going back into the game, uh, what else is going on around the map? Uh, there's me. Wait, you can see my mouse on the screen. Clicking everywhere. Clicking as fast as I can. Trying to be, get my APM up to 1,000. I got a headdress and then I sold it. Ah, regeneration. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea, but then it didn't seem like a good idea. I could use my gold other, elsewhere. I throw the bloodlust on top of the Centaur War Runner. So he, can run, so he can war run a little bit faster. And then I click over here. I don't know where I'm clicking, but I'm just heading over somewhere. 
and let's go back to free camera because that's kind of boring. Not really much happening. Uh, we see the, enti the entire team's over here. I placed the observer where I see everybody. Everybody on the other side are ready to walk up this hill, but no, they decide not to. It's a dust up on Chris Manus, so some, some detection. The fan lantern needs to be in a little bit, of, a little careful with that. The, other than that, nothing really else. Other than that, nothing really else to look at. Uh, fan lantern gets himself a bloodlust on top of him. He can move a little bit faster, attack a little bit faster. Uh, if a team fight did break out, that could that could have potentially ended his life, but not really. Uh, Rubik's Rubik Zap. <laughs> wow. Kuka kills the entire wave of one swing of his well, one swing of his uh blade. But anyway, I was gonna say Rubik's uh, Rubik Zap was able to catch him. Uh, There's Rubik catch on the fan line. Did they think it's a real one? But no, it's not. The blood on top of the fan line did kind of make it seem like I was a real one, but no. Zap able to kill the uh, losing so Fanalons are really now that I think about Fanalons they had a hard time uh, in this game because of Kunka and because of Rubik basically all the AOE or all the bounce damage that they can do under attack. to make they basically made the face of Void have an easier time with his job. Speaking of face of Void, face of Void has himself a has himself a butterfly. As far as what other items are going on in the map, Kunka has a chrysalis dear dear Jesus, so he's doing even more damage. Uh, so especially if he uh, has Tidebringer activated the same time he ha uh, he's that. Radiance Middle Tower is under Especially attack. if he has a crit the same time the Tidebringer proc. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, Agnum set up on up on Lich, so Lich's ulti will be doing that much more damage. Huda defines up on Centaur Warner, but Centaur Warner Dyer's looks like he's building something else. He's building a blade mail by the looks of it. So he's going for that blade mail. Uh, meanwhile, we got the we got an engagement going on top. Uh, we got the we got the entire dire side in a very bad spot. The tower was over here. I'm not really sure why they were here. Lich ulti or Basically, uh, throws his ulti on top of everybody. Lich throws his ulti and bounces at everybody, and everybody's pretty is going down. Over my dad, which is me. I am running away from my life, trying to do what I can. I did experience a lag at this point, but no, too late. I just turn around, and start auto attacking. I know I'm dead. Nothing really much I can do. I throw out the fire. I throw out the flame on top of Kunka, and Kunka goes. Kunka stays alive and gets a kill on me. Or oh, sorry, face the boy got the last hit. And now this top tower will be will be being sieged. I'm not really sure if there's much that the guy can do, but this is seeming like this is seeming pretty one-sided for me. Uh, to me, uh, Rubik has himself a fissure, so he just threw that out just to kill the creep wave that much faster. Because it has a crazy long range, look at that. And it's a jump charge used to help them push or help the die radiant push the tower down faster. Uh, take a quick look at the items, the items as far as they go. Yeah, I finished talking about everything. Uh Chris Queen of Pain is building herself an Agonim Scepter. I don't think she'll ever get the gold for that. I'm not sure what she does. Uh, Organ Magic doesn't have much of anything. Centaur Warner activates the ulti. Beautiful ulti from him. But everybody's out of, a little bit out of position, but now they're in position. He throws up a stun. He's able to hit two. There's a boat thrown. I don't think boat hit anybody. Hits his Earth Shaker with a beautiful, beautiful ulti from him. Uh, Rubik picks up a Rubik still with a enchanted totem, which is not going to really do much for him except for giving him extra damage. Fan Lancer is. Fan, they do see Fan Lancer where he's going. I throw uh, the blood that's thrown on top of him, and Kunka gets hit with the fire with a flame break, or whatever it's called. And he's trying to go for the kill on. Whoa. He's trying to go for the kill on uh, Ogre Magi, but he's not able to make it out. He's out Shadow Blades away. And Lich is saying hello, or what the fa friendly face. Kunka could potentially turn around and get the kill on the Fan Lancer. Rubik steals the Spirit Lance, not good at all. That's not something Fan Lancer wants to be facing up against. It does hurt, and there's Rubik with an illusion. Will the illusion split? It's a big question. That'd be kind of cool if the illusion did split. But anywho, as far as what else is going on on the map, I mean, uh, Dyer lost a top tower. Dyer's bottom tower is under uh, they, not, they now have naked racks. Dyer's bottom what else is going to be going on around the game? I don't really know. Uh, let's take a look at the, let's take another look at the per first person perspective of, of Ogamaji, who is <laughs> once again me. I am getting an item. I'm getting a what looks to be a chainmail. Oh, I'm trying to build that buckler for that. Um, I'm trying to build the buckler first. I do have. I do have uh, in 200 gold. I do have my headdress because my Trenko boots I was going to take apart and then build my headdress with the 200 gold from the recipe but I decided Daya's to keep my Trenko boots up because I wanted, the, I wanted the heal and also wanted to have the bonus movement speed that comes with that so here we are just running around the corner I am clicking away uh, don't really know what's going on I think uh, my team needs to hurry up and come back together Queen of Pain, or not Queen of Pain, Crystal Maiden uh, sees me I wasn't sure how many people were behind her so I decided Haste. to run away I did not want to die and it was also a haste room, so Crystal Maiden did pick that up. By the looks of it, I threw it on Sentry Ward or Observer Ward on the side. So I see two people, and we're posturing, post uh, posturing to get ready for a team fight mid, or maybe we're just running away. I don't really remember what happened. Anyway, enough of the per first person.
first person perspective, we see Earthshaker throwing out the stun, or throwing out the fissure so I can block Lich a little bit. And Phantalizer is walking around the side. Uh, he might be able to find himself a Lich for free. Lich throws out the, the Spirit Lance. He's able to slow him. Uh, well, he's, he throws the Purge out on top of him too. So Lich is moving around. Oh my gosh, two people caught inside the Lich ulti. Oh my gosh, exactly what he wanted. Centaur came at a pretty bad time. Oh, Rubik did steal the stun from Centaur. And now faces catches three inside of his Chronosphere. Will he be able to get, kill or get a kill? I do not know. There we go. <laughs> Ogre by there throwing, throwing the... Uh, Throwing the Bloodlust on top of Queen of Pain who can blink away instead of throwing the Bloodlust on himself. Queen of Pain throws the ulti out around the corner but it doesn't do enough, it doesn't do nearly enough damage and Ogre Mind that goes down. The moment you were born. So things didn't really go too well in that fight. Now by the looks, it looks like Lich is building himself a sheep stick, I'm not too sure. He does, or, yeah he, he, um, he has 1300 gold at the moment. What Radiant's piece will he be buying next? I do not know. Uh, Rubik also stole himself stump, so he's barracks. able to. Oh my gosh, uh, Ru Rubik's able to have Radiant's another disable. Uh, uh, meanwhile, the Dyer's top racks are pretty much going down. And but also helping the mid, uh, the mid tower is getting sieged. Nobody's really up a lot or up to fight against this Centaur ulti. It's up in 60 seconds, so I really need that up to engage in a team fight. But other than that, uh, Raiden are pretty much handling this pretty darn well. Dyer's <coughs> Uh, Faces Void is building himself an MKB. Rubik stole himself what? What is Rubik stole Fissure? This is not good at all. Uh, Ogre, uh, uh, Ogre Magic is coming up here. He throws up the flame. He goes up the flame. This is Kuka Boat. Kuka Boat hits everybody. And Centaur is also hit by a torn. Uh, Ogre Magic goes down. That's a beautiful stun from Earthshaker, but it's a little too late. So he's trying to run away as best he can to the best of his ability. Meanwhile, Fennel Hunter doesn't really have much farm. To, he can't really stay in the fight. He's building a Vlad's by the look of it. I do not agree with the Vlad's. I do not think illusions get auras or get the Vlad's. Or pretty sure they don't. I need to go do my research to figure that out. But Vlad's on uh, Vlad's on Fenelance is not really all that much of a good idea. That's my personal opinion. Once again, I did not play Fenelance, I played Organ Magi. So I obviously did things pretty bad. It's a GG Nori. <laughs> Say, oh god, hurry up, just end the game, please. Now, meanwhile, I go out the side or go out into the base. I'm trying to fight like a man, see what I can do. Let's go ahead and take a look at the free camera see how good I am at, uh, at ma micro my stuff. I'm trying to go for the Kunka, I activate the Bloodless on myself, and no, I'm not able to use it. Oh yeah, meanwhile, there's a Rubik did use Fissure in front of our fountain, so he's blocking everybody in, nobody can come out. So I was pretty much out by myself. It was a bad, bad day for me. I mean, I'm doing what I can to kill these creeps. Mark them like a madman. Centaur will run the ultis. I go in. I'm see. I don't like what I see. I first get hit by. I, I get hit by everything. I get hit by the torrent. I get hit by the boat. And Kuka's been landing his boat pretty well. Big shout out to Kuka. I'm sorry. Big shout out to the black guy from Ghostbusters for being so good with those boats. This was a random draft. So he obviously plays a lot of Kuka. And I'm just clicking around. I'm already dead. So, where am I clicking? Is a big question. And a lot of, of a lot of damage being done already. I mean, this game is essentially over. There's not really much that Dyer can do to come back from this. So there's not really much we can do to come back from this. I keep forgetting I will say that Kuka has a chrysalis, and as you can see, the net worth, everybody on the radiant side are in the are in the top. I mean, the closest one is Phantom but Crystal Maiden has more farm than Phantom Lancer. So that's not really good at all. She's actually building herself a sheep. She does have that up. She's gonna go get it. Uh, I get hit by everything. I think I'm trying to run. I'm trying to run away. And there's a boat. X marks is fine. Boom! I go down. Boom goes to dynamite. Crystal Manon picks herself up a sheep stick. There we go. Sheep stick on her. She'll be able to sheep up. Fanline to Fanline to is slow. Or turn to a piggy. So he can't really run anywhere. And he goes down to the black guy from Ghostbusters. As an LOL thrown out. A GG well played by Crystal Manon. That is it for this game. All right, guys. So as promised, I just I just casted a, uh, a not too not too not too good um, replay of me playing Dota 2. Not really the best exhibition of how good I am at Dota or how bad I am at Dota. Actually, a great exhibition exposition of how bad I can be at Dota. But. I promise you guys, I don't always play like that. But anyway, this game did it end of the loss. You win some, you lose some. You can't really help at all. Um, I am Cool Blue. I just bought you guys a... Oh, not a random podcast. I just bought you guys a replay or a first-person matchmaking view. Well, not first-person. A matchmaking cast of me playing <laughs> matchmaking with my friends so I can show you guys how I play. Even though I focus more on the game as opposed to just myself, I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that I can play Dota. Yeah, actually... Like I said, it's not really all that good of a display of that because we kind of lost.
but you have your good games, you have your bad games, I don't know uh, how will the next game go, I, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and cast that one up right now. But anyway, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys whenever.